All right. Well, Leafs lost, of course. Uh, so why not do a little series recap, right? What happens next? What what went wrong? What went good, if you can say that? Oh, so what we're going to do is I've got the Leafs press conference here. Uh, I'll show it up in the corner. Um, I'm just going to react to it, and then we'll just uh, go into a little bit in depth on the press conference and then my feelings about the series as a whole and what happened with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So let's get right into the video. Austin, this core has had uh, you know, playoff disappointments before. Did, did any of that get to you guys and the, the moment being too big in terms of the pressure tonight? No, I mean, it's it's a new year. It's a completely different team. Um, you know, we brought in different guys, um, different format. I mean, I think you we throw those, you know, we live in the moment and we move past those. And obviously, uh, um, you know, to answer your question, no. There you go. Just to follow up on that, that Mitch, did sense. you feel that you guys were creating enough of the quality chances you would need? And, or would you like maybe some better looks? I have no idea. I would have to go through it, but... I mean, I felt like in every game we had at least a couple grade A chances right in front of the net that just rolled off a stick. Um, shot it too early. Uh, Got to have more just patience with the puck. Shot it too late. Mitch. But uh, held on to the puck a little bit. You know, even tonight I thought we were around the net. We had opportunities. I mean, I had plenty. Of just didn't go in again. And it seems like it's you always the same stuff chances, saying. Yeah. So um, we know we got to be better. And obviously, you take a lot of pressure on yourself to try and be better and want to be better. So um, it's disappointing. Jack, I just wonder if you can, at the risk of asking an obvious question, can you summarize how you feel at this moment and how the team felt sort of in the locker room, what that scene was like? It's just tough. Like, I just think of how hard our team battled and for it to end on a goal, you know, worst goal of my career and happened in game seven, you know, it's just not acceptable. And, um, you know, I think – the team counts on me to be better, and I know I can be a lot better than that. So Jack, I'm going to get team. back to work and be better. Morgan, to what too. degree do you, do you think this series loss was connected to any of the ones that came before it? Did, were you guys feeling pressure over the years, or is that no. not a No, that's a – I mean, that's a perfectly fine question, and I totally understand how you would connect those. But um, honestly, I don't think they were really um, a factor. I think that this is a different group. It's been a very different year different playoff format um so i really don't think that there was anything um you know that happened in the past that played into what happened you know during this year's playoff series um in my opinion um but i you know totally understand how you would draw those connections right, but i man. just think that there was you know too many different um variables this year that would lead a to a connection from the past. And well said. Sheldon, when you look at specifically well this game, how did you feel about the team tonight? What did you sense from them and what was holding them back? Well, the opponent was part of it. Um, you know, they, they did a really good job here today of really clogging things up in the neutral zone, protecting their blue line. Uh, as I said, the game was played a lot differently tonight than the previous two where they really pushed and really came at us. Today, they sat back a lot and you know, I, and uh, they were just content to wait, you know, for something to go their way, and it did. Um, I don't know when I go back and look at it. I don't know if I'll find that we gave up even one scoring chance through the, you know, real scoring chance through the through the whole game. Um, certainly at five on five, um, but same time we didn't generate nearly enough. And I think that was their that was their recipe and plan here tonight, and clearly worked for them. That did. That did. Well said, Keith. Well said, man. Just watching that, just watching the post game seven interviews, you know, Austin, Mitch, Jack, um, Keith, what Riley said, Riley anyway, I can't, I can't disagree with that. Past doesn't impact now. You learn from your mistakes, different situations, different scenarios, same result. Um, what Keith said, completely agree. Montreal changed the script again. They adjusted. They didn't come right attacking. They felt strongly that Carey Price was going to make the save. They're going to keep the lease to the outside, clog up the neutral zone, clog up any shooting, uh, shooting lane, try to limit the high-end scoring chances. They did. They needed the break. They got it. 
The one thing I want to disagree with is Jack Campbell. You are fantastic this series. You are fantastic this game. That one goal shouldn't decide a series. To be fair, it went off. He got off a stick pretty quick. If you if you watch the Steve Dangle uh, live feed, even he was surprised. Like, okay, we got it. Yes, he wants that one back, but the Leafs need to give you more than one. They do, and it has to be more than one before a minute left in the game. So what happened this series? What truly happened? And can the Leafs come back from it for next year? Game one, Leafs lose 2-1. Jack Campbell plays phenomenal. Carey Price plays phenomenal. The bad thing, JT gets hurt. It was awful. It was devastating. It obviously impacted the Leafs. They weren't in the right set of minds. And then, of course, the turnover, Sandy and trying to catch Byron, and he gets the goal of the playoffs. Probably, yeah, it's going to be probably the goal of the playoffs. There's been a few nice ones. Goal of the playoffs, Montreal takes it. 2-1, they're up 1-0. Game two, Leafs come back, and they get the win for JT. They absolutely destroy, destroy the Canadians 5-1. They show here they could score against Price. He's mortal. Game three, closer, closer game, but it didn't look like the Leafs were going to ever lose that game. Close, they win 2 1. Jack Campbell, once again, phenomenal. Carey Price, phenomenal. Game four, Leafs win 4 0. And even though they won 4 0, they got Dermot in there. Everyone questioned why he was in there. Well, obviously, it was a back-to-back. -back. Jack Campbell gets a shutout. Plays phenomenal. Carey Price, again, looks mortal. The game probably should have been about 9 or 10 to 2, just like the game, uh, game 2 should have been higher. Heck, game 3 should have been higher as well. Go to game 5. Chance to close it out. Leafs lose 4-3 in overtime. Uh, this game, what were they? Down 3 nothing. Came back. Storm back, tie it up. And this is the game where it was giveaways. Giveaways screwed him over. Sandin had two giveaways. Third goal was the third, or the second goal, whatever it was. The scramble play was was what was Montreal's game plan. And it worked. Sure, we'll give him that one. And then, obviously, uh, Galchenyuk's gaff. Okay, regroup. Game six now. Down to nothing. They come back. Dermot giveaway, goal, they lose the game. Off uh, Kakinami stick, Nick Spagosian goes in. So we go into game seven. And how I see this series, turning point, big turning point really, is they brought Dermot in there and Sandine sat. He sat, then he came back in and he just wasn't ready. Costly turnovers early and the team was flat. But I'm not going to blame Sandine, actually. I'm going to blame the team as a whole. They came out flat game five. Montreal came out steaming. Came out flat game six, basically the entire game until, what, midway through the third. Habs came out steaming. This game, game seven, both teams come out quite flat, cautious. Montreal doesn't go at them. They wait. They're patient. Look for their their chance to counterattack, and they do. They get a chance in the power play. They capitalize. And that's it. You can't score more than two or three goals against Carey Price. You're not going to win. Jack Campbell's get, giving you the opportunity to do so each and every night. He played phenomenal. So what are my takeaways from this series? One, Jack Campbell is your starter. Freddie is off to make crap ton of money somewhere else. If somehow they can get him at a discount, I would love a Campbell, Freddie Anderson, 1A, 1B split. I want to see like Flurry Leonard in Vegas split it. I'm fine with that. Hopefully they can do that. Um, two, sign Zach Hyman. Sign Zach Hyman now, uh, whatever it is. He is the bull of your team. He showed in this playoffs. He showed it in game seven. Still has no finish, but... You know, he helps generate chances. Uh, three, Riley impressed me. 
I was very critical of Riley this year. I thought he made some bonehead decisions, bonehead moves. But he impressed me this series. He played well. And you know what? I really liked his answer in that, in that interview, that post-interview. He came across very articulate, um, knowledgeable, and he wasn't going to sugarcoat anything. I liked it. It was the leadership that you don't really hear, again, from, you know, a guy, a silent guy like that. Uh, he had a great, great playoff, in my opinion. TJ Brody, loved the addition. Nick Foligno, you could tell he was hurt. It's going to come out he was, he was hurt. Um, he didn't give the punch that was expected for a first rounder and two fourths. So that was a bit disappointing. That's a bit disappointing there. Um, for, for forwards, uh, Angvel, you know, he took that penalty in game seven. It was costly. But again, the officiating, we'll get to that as well. So, you know, timely errors there, but it happened to everyone basically on this Leafs team. Forwards wise, um, Galchenyuk, I think he's found a spot on the Leafs. I'm sure there'll be an offer out there. It'll probably be around a million dollars as well for another year to show me what you can do. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if some other teams offer him a little bit more. Um, defense, I think the Leafs are okay. It sucks that Jake Muzzin wasn't there tonight. I think he would have made a big difference, uh, especially on the penalty kill. But again, it's Corey Perry. That shot lane, that's probably open. Brody did what he needed to do on the block. Hits off Perry's inside, uh, inside of his left leg and goes in. All right. Uh, but it wasn't great to not have a muzzin. However, the Leafs played well defensively. If you think about it, their only scoring chances for the Habs were the missed two-on-one where it bounced over Anderson's stick. Gallagher got that chance where it was just the shot somehow went in. And then you had the power play. Defensively, they, they played well. Sandine had a good game. Dermot had a good game. It wouldn't surprise me if Dermot is picked up, though, by Seattle. So I'll just say that. Uh, so team-wise, it did well. Um, disappointments in the playoffs, obviously, Felino. Simmons didn't bring much. Jumbo didn't bring much. Spezza, sign him now. Sign him to a two-year deal. I don't care. Uh, he was fantastic. The big guys, did they show up? Well, Tavares obviously was hurt. He tried to come back. He was training with him. Uh, Matthews, it's disappointing. Once again, his shooting percentage is dropped way down low. Is it under three now, probably? Um, especially in game deci like deciding games. He had ridiculous shots. Tonight he had chances. Wasn't hitting the net. Nothing was going in. Mitch Marner picked up some points. But again, in his interview, he said, you know, sometimes they, he shot too quickly. I wanted him to say, and other times he held on the puck too long. So that, was, that was the issue there. Um, people throughout Twitter saying, you know, he can't win and everything like that. He's won. He's won before. He led the London Knights to, to titles. He knows what, what there is. There's, he can do it. He can. Um, what are we going to have? We're probably going to have an Eichel versus uh, Marner debate. Are we going to do the trade? I'm sure that's going to come ahead very soon. Um, going forward, Sandine looks like a lock. He had that one bad game. He looks good. I wouldn't mind keeping Dermot as well. I wouldn't mind signing, signing Bogosian. He was a bright spot. He played well this series. Overall, I can't even say the Habs rode the better goalie because they didn't. The difference in this series, other than the officiating being absolute trash for both teams, for both teams. In one of the games, they missed about eight calls, probably going both ways. This game, bias here, but Eric Stahl got away with two guaranteed penalties. Guaranteed. Uh, the forearm across the face on Dermot in front of the ref, where the ref almost put his hand up and decided not to. Brads, 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 Brads. Uh, that was a penalty. And not long later, same round spot, Angval got one. That sucks. You impacted the game in a bad way. Missed the stalled trip, impacted the game a bad way. And this isn't just the Leafs Hab series. This is all the playoffs. The officiating is inconsistent across different series, across different games, across different parts of a specific game. And that needs to be sorted out. And it's every year you're going to hear this, but it needs to be sorted out. So officiating both ways, 
the Leafs won uh, whatever game five, let's say, and they missed a bunch of calls in the Habs, I'd be saying the exact same thing. I'd probably be saying it with a smile on my face because the Leafs would have moved on, but same thing. The officiating cannot impact a game like this. There's a rule book there for a reason. Call it. That's all I got to say. If it ends up being eight, nine power plays each, then that's what it is. And teams need to adjust. Officials don't need to adjust to playoff hockey. The rule book doesn't get thrown out. It should not. It's there for a reason. Call the freaking rules. Um, overall, though, why is this series over? Toronto couldn't score enough. That's it. Campbell gave him the chance. Price gave the Habs the chance. The Habs capitalized when they needed to. The Leafs did not. And there you have it. And the Leafs are going home once again. And there's question marks all over the place. Um, for this team, do I want Dubas's head? No. Do I want Keith's head? No. Do I want the player's head? No. The team showed they are brilliant all year. Dubas put together a fantastic team. Keith's defense, defensively, the Leafs have improved greatly. There was literally probably a handful of gaffes that happened and Montreal capitalized on them. And then obviously your stars couldn't figure out how to score when they basically were smothered by the other team. Adjustments need to be made and they, they're going to be, they're going to be. And if not, I'd say you probably got another year two years and then things will be shaken up. But I do want to say this, the Leafs and these guys are what? Oh, for five in the first round now, at least they're making the playoffs. Remember if anyone watched Michael Jordan, he didn't make the playoffs, didn't win a title for years, for years, the best player of all time. Alex Ovechkin couldn't, you know, dismantle the Penguins for years until he got his break. We're not going to talk about Crosby. He's, he's a different breed. But I know people are getting upset now because everyone's been saying patience and they have the ability to do it. Just take a breath. I know it's going to piss people off, but it's just hockey. It's just hockey. Tomorrow, your life continues on if the Leafs win or lose. That's my final little rant. The series goes to the Montreal Canadiens. Well done to them. You deserve it. Congratulations, good luck against Winnipeg Jets. Toronto, take a break, relax, come back at it. And we do it all again next year, 82 games. And let's hope uh, they, these, this playoff run lasts longer than this year. All right, that's it for me. If you listen to this, if you watch this, thank you for sticking around. Appreciate it. More videos to come. Thank you. See you next time. Take care. And always, win, loss, whatever happens, go Leafs go.